Hi, Robert, I have a question. You mentioned in your teachings that fear is the root of anger. How do they relate with each other? This is a great question, especially right now with everything that's going on in the world. I don't know if you've noticed, but there is lots and lots of anger out in the world. We're seeing anger in the media. We're seeing anger in politics. We're seeing anger on display out in the streets. Well, to really understand anger and why there's so much of it in the world and why there's so much of it in the spirit, we need to be aware that fear is the root of it. Now, fear is the granddaddy of all negative emotions. Fear is the granddaddy of all ungodly emotions. And we see it right there in Genesis 3, verses 8 through 10. Let's take a look at that scripture. It says, They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife, talking about Adam and Eve, hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Then the Lord called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid myself. Adam is saying, I was afraid because I was uncovered. I was afraid because I was separated from you. Fear is the granddaddy of all negative, ungodly emotions because fear indicates that in this situation, we have chosen to separate ourselves from God. We have chosen to take ourselves out of God because in God we're covered. In God, there's always peace available to us. And then fear can manifest in lots of different ways, especially with anger. One of the things the Lord showed me years ago, the connection between fear and anger, is we often choose to give place to anger because we are afraid way down deep that we are powerless in that situation. We believe the lie that we are powerless in that situation. We fear like we can't have any control over what's going on in our government. So we get angry at the politicians. In the moment, fear, or sorry, in the moment, Anger feels like power, but it's based, we give place to it because of the lie that we are powerless. We're afraid that we're powerless, and that is absolutely a lie from the pit of hell because we are never powerless. In Christ, he is the hope of glory. In Christ, we have the power of the Holy Spirit. In Christ, we have the ability to release light. In Christ, the very spirit of the Lord God is upon us to, to set the captives free. In Christ, there is no situation that we're powerless in, even if it's just prayer. I don't like when people say, well, I don't know what to do, so I guess I'll just pray. No, prayer is powerful. Isaiah 55, 11 says, when we send forth the word of God, it never returns void. It accomplishes all that it's sent to do. It always produces fruit. So we always have an ability in Christ to operate in his power, by his authority, to his glory. Anger comes from that moment of being like, I don't feel like I have anything to do, so I can, have, uh, I can affect any change. I feel powerless, so I'm going to give place to anger because anger makes me feel powerful. Well, anger in the moment does feel powerful, but that's just a feeling and it's a lie. Um, it, it, it's, it, or maybe I should say there's power in anger, but it's power for the wrong team. Look at what Ephesians 4.27 says. Anger gives a foothold to the devil. That's why the devil lies to you in a situation and says, oh, it's too big for you. You are but a grasshopper in the eyes of the giants that I have placed in the land. You should be afraid. You can do nothing. That's a lie. We're never powerless in Christ. I've covered that. But he wants us to not only be afraid we're powerless, but he wants us to buy into the lie of anger making me powerful in this moment because anger actually gives a foothold to the devil. So instead of us as believing Christians with Christ in us, the hope of glory, him who is light living in us, and we have the opportunity to arise and shine for our light has come, especially according to Isaiah 60, when there's darkness in the earth and deep darkness darkness on the people. We're not supposed to look at darkness in our government and deep darkness on our politicians or darkness in the media or deep darkness on our education system or, or any of that and go, oh, it's too big. I'm powerless. No, we're to say, aha, this is my opportunity. Let the kingdom of God arise in me. Let the glory of the Lord appear upon me. God, give me your wisdom. Give me your battle plan. Give me your blueprints. Give me your strategies so I can be a effective on behalf of the kingdom in dealing with this situation in the earth to your glory, as opposed to saying, oh, I feel powerless, so I'm going to be angry, and that makes me feel powerful, but I'm simply giving place to the enemy. I'm simply giving place to darkness instead of giving place to light. 
Now, one last thing I want to touch on, especially for you prophetic feelers out there. I am a prophetic feeler. I sense atmospheres. And when there's a lot of anger in the atmosphere and a lot of anger in the spirit and the enemy's using a lot of fear to control and manipulate, you're going to feel the fear. You're going to feel the anger because you are a feeler. But it's very important in this season to learn to operate as a prophetic feeler. It's an incredibly powerful gift from God. It allows us to feel God's heart in any situation, but we'll also feel the situation. So it's important that you ask Holy Spirit to help mentor you in how to discern, how to feel the atmosphere, but it's not so you come under it. God doesn't want you to feel an atmosphere of anger so you come under it and become angry and give a foothold to the enemy. Or God doesn't want you to feel when there's an atmosphere of fear or a spirit of fear that has been literally released into the earth right now so that you become afraid. He wants you to be able to feel it and discern it so that you can come up above it in him and deal with it. You have not been given a spirit of fear, but one of love, power, and a sound mind. So it's important in this season to ask Holy Spirit to help you to mentor you in how do I discern the atmospheres, how do I feel the atmospheres, but not come under them, but actually become uh, get above them and take authority over that spirit that you're feeling in the atmosphere or in the room or in your family or in the nation, because that's what you're called to do. Thank you for listening. You can get more teachings and resources as well as more information about Robert Hodgkin Ministries and Men on the Frontlines all at roberthodgkin.com.